Hello everybody, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There is a bunch of heresies running around in the group that calls themselves Christian Identity. Um, some of them call themselves seed liners, which means that uh, they kind of understand what happened in Genesis 6 when the sons of God came in under the daughters of men. Uh, the denominational or demon nominational church world, as I'm fond of calling them, will tell you that, well, the sons of God were believers and the daughters of men were unbelievers. So basically, I guess they're saying that all the men were believers and all the women were unbelievers. And then they got married and when, you know, and everybody knows that when believers and unbelievers have kids there that they have giants right think Goliath oh that's their that's their theory some people say that uh, Cain was fathered by Satan which if they want to believe that that's fine um, some of the people that I know that are really scholars that uh, I mean know a lot about the Bible I mean I wish I knew 10% of what they knew a lot of them do believe that Cain was fathered by Satan. So that's what they mean by seed liners. But I tell you what, among those uh, that uh, the group that uh, rhymes with news, you know, like current news, um, they hate Christian identity seed liners more than anything. So there's got to be some truth to it, right? But there's a lot of garbage in Christian identity. I mean, there was one guy, big famous name in Christian identity, says, well, the devil doesn't even exist. And then another thing they do is uh, they say that, uh, well, you know, they'll, they'll tell you that all the Bibles are in error. They're all mistranslated. They're all wrong. And it's like, really? You know, if I believe that all, well, look at it this way. If the Bible was wrong, why would there have to be 666 different versions? You got the New American Standard, you got the New International Version, the Living Bible, the Complete Jewish Bible, you got the King James, uh, the Douay Reims. Why are there so many different versions if they're all wrong? That's because one of them is right and the rest of them are wrong. I mean, if you got two different things that don't say the same thing, one of them, at least one of them, is wrong, right? Correct? So, I don't know. But they'll tell you that all the Bibles are wrong. Well, I, I have a hard time with that. So, now, one of the things, uh, and I won't mention this very famous Christian identity, uh, I guess you could call him a pastor, I won't mention his name, but uh, he did a thing on why the King James is wrong. All right, let's go to 1 John chapter 2 and verse 13. He says, I write unto you fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. Well, who was from the beginning? Jesus was, right? I write unto you young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Verse 15, listen carefully. Love not the world. Love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. All right, so we're told not to love the world. 
And we're told not to love the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All right, let's go to probably the most famous verse in the Bible. The book of John, chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So which is it? God loves the world, but we're told not to love the world? Which is it? And that's, he says, this famous preacher, Christian identity, says, see, he says that the, uh, the group of people that rhymes with news, current events, news, you know, says that uh, this doesn't even belong in the Bible. It was put in there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And, uh, but, but the, the real question is, take a look at this. It says, for God so loved, past tense. It doesn't say, for God so loves the world. He said, for God so loved the world, past tense. Now, let's go to Genesis. Oh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, we're going to go to Genesis either 1 or 2. All right, uh, Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us, plural, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, my opinion is, now Eve hadn't been created yet, but I'm of the opinion that these were the souls of every male and female of Adam that were ever to be born was created here. I, I believe that's what I believe. I I could be wrong, and you know I don't have a any oh monopoly on truth. That's for sure. So God created man in his own in, image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, Wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. Listen carefully. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Everything was good up to this point. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. When you go to chapter 2, it says, uh, on the seventh day, God rested. Not because he was tired, but because he gave us six days of work, and on the seventh day was for mankind to rest and to reflect upon the things of God, which is a very good thing to do, in my opinion. Keeping a Sabbath is, well, it's a good thing, right? Now, God saw everything that he had made. Behold, it was very good. So, 
For God so loved the world. This, prior to this, this up to this point, was the world that God loved. And then when you get to, you know, Genesis 3, well, the uh, serpent in the garden caused Eve to sin, and Adam sinned, and then death fell upon the world. You think God loves that? That's the world that God says not to love. Don't love this evil, sinful, fallen uh, uh, creation that's degenerated. No, don't love that. But this is the world that God loved, loved, past tense. Up until the fall, it was very good. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So, in Matthew 25, verse 34, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You see, God knew that we would fall even before he created us. And that's why, you know, Christ Christ was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, Paul writes, According as he hath chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Wow. In Revelation 13, 8, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Christ was ordained to be killed for our sins from the foundation of the world. Huh. How's that? So, you know, Christ was ordained from the very beginning. So, is this a a contradiction? God said he loved the world, past tense. Yeah, he loved his original creation before the fall. And he made provisions for us that we should be able to be redeemed from sin. That's the gospel. That's why Christ died for his sheep. You know, and we're not supposed to love this fallen world. That's why there's going to be a new world This old world is going to pass away with fire. And that's why there's going to be a new Jerusalem. Because the old one's been polluted with the blood of the prophets. But we're going to cover that when I get uh, going on this Mystery Babylon uh, conclusion. But I thought I would point this out. So, all right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name. Amen.